Hello and welcome, my name is Oliver for Tutorial Palette and welcome to our new Abstract Particles tutorial. First, I'm going to show you what we will create. Some cool, organic, moving abstract particles with some glow work going on. Um, you need for that tutorial a plugin called Trap Code Form and you can download trial version on redgiant.com and you need a 3D model. And there you can go to, for example, TurboSquid is uh, TurboSquid.com and just search for abstract. And you've got abstract shape. Just for example, make sure you go to format and choose OBJ only. Of course, this is the only file format trap code form will understand and show up. And here you can choose from any free object you like some cool freaky things here and you can choose or you can use of course any OBJ model you maybe find on the web or uh, make on your own in your 3D package. It's up to you. In our tutorial we use one of these uh, three uh, abstract shapes. Okay, so just download that or go on illumi.design and download our project file which includes the OBJ model of course. Okay, so now let's get started. First you need a new composition. Make it HD or whatever size you like. We take uh, 25 frames a second and 10 seconds length. It's okay. And first is we need a new layer, new solid. We call that BG for background. Next is layer, new solid and that's what we call form. And then we import our OBJ model, double click here on the project and navigate to your OBJ file. In our case, it's the organic shape 01 and import that and bring it just above, just under the background. You can solo that and you see OBJ for use with trap code form. If you can read that, if you see that, everything's fine and we, you can go ahead. Next is we need a camera, lay a new camera make it uh, 35 millimeters and hit OK. And then we select our form layer and go to our effects and presets by typing in form and, if you, and you have already installed trap code form. Then form shows up with the form layer selected. Just double click on form and here we have the uh, form settings. So uh, first I will go uh, through the settings from top to bottom and I will go several times from top to bottom because it's easier for you guys to follow us. On that, because you have so many uh, things to adjust, so many things you can uh, tweak, uh, so it's much more easier to follow. Okay, so before you touch anything, go to base form, and here is where you uh, define the, the form, the basic of your OBJ grid. In our case, we change from base form box grid to OBJ model, and here on the bottom you have the OBJ settings, and here you can select your OBJ layer or the layer where, uh, which contains your OBJ file. In our case it's organic shape and here we go. Here is the OBJ model. Okay. Now we want to increase the size of the OBJ model which means X is top to bottom, Y is left right and Z is depth in Z space. Okay. And we will increase that 690, 620, 310. Okay, this is what we would like to have. Um, if you go to your camera and to your camera orbit tool, now you can orbit around this 3D model with your camera as you see. Okay, so it's completely um, movable in 3D space, just to explain that. Okay. So uh, next is we go to our particle settings. The particle type on default is uh, sphere. We leave that and we bring the sphere feather up to 100. Of course you want to have no feathering going on there. And we give them right now a color, something cool, orangish, golden looking. Yeah, that's okay. And next is we go to shading, we leave anything. We go to fractal field. Just first put the parameters after I explain what we did. 
effect size 5, displays 30, and flow 2 by 2 by 2. So, uh, what that means is you have a displacement field with a strength of 30. You can increase this, of course, so it's getting much more, uh, it's got much more weird, much more abstract. We leave that on 30. And this fractal field affects the size of the particles by 5. And the flow means this is the time the uh, displacement field runs through your 3D ob object and uh, affects the particles. So as higher the values in X, Y, and Z, is faster the movement that will uh, go on. So if we do a little preview render here, as you see, very small moving organic looking gone on there. Okay? Cool. Uh, next is we go to our camera and position that uh, position the camera to the OBJ model. So first we take the camera Z track tool and zoom in to this model. And next is we want to have the position of this model. We take the this tool and just move it up so that we can see these two sparks here are looking good. Okay. Back to form layer and back to particles. We change the transfer mode. No, we leave it on add. That's okay. Oh, let's play around with some other settings. Let's play with the color. I don't like it. It's too light. A bit more orangish look here. Maybe like so. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So now we want to have some depth of field looking. So we want to have a few particles sharp in the foreground and uh, in the center and s the other particles we want to blow out in the foreground and the background. So for that, to achieve that, we go to our camera settings, camera options. First is we enable depth of field. Now blurry is going on here. Next is we increase the aperture value. Let's try. Let's try 100. Okay, now anything gets blurry, and we want to have the focal point here on these particles. So we go to focal distance or focus distance, and bring that down until we have the particles here in this area sharp. See? A uh, bit more up, like so. Yeah, that's fine. So we have the sharp particles here, sharp. And as more they go in the background, on the foreground, as more as, uh, they get blurry. Um, you can change that also, or, or um, you can influence that by uh, changing the base form in the Z, Z size. So if we increase that, maybe to 600 also, these edges here come in front of the, in the camera. So we've got much more blurriness going here on, and much more in the, in, the, in the background, so we have, again, to adjust the uh, camera settings. Okay, let's try this. Camera options and play with the focal distance. Maybe so. A touch more. Okay, now we have sharp areas here and here and blurn out in the foreground. Okay. So now we go to our form layer and we duplicate that by string D. This one we rename to form foreground and this one we rename to form background, just BG. And on the form background layer, 
there are two things we want to do. First is we go to our shading options and switch shading on. And then if you hide the form foreground layer, you will see the layer is gone, the BG layer, because of the shading and because of there is no light in the scene. So we will fix that. Go to layer new, light, make it a point light, 100 by 500, hit OK. Here we go. Now here's a cool lighting going on. Bring that above the form foreground and we select the form foreground and tweak another settings so we go to disperse and twist and give them a disperse of 100. That means we will explode these particles in x, y and z direction by 100. Ah, okay, because uh, it was the wrong layer we selected. Of course, we do that on the form BG. Sorry for that. This person twist and give him a disperse of 100. Here we go. Now we can see that. Totally explode. Looks very cool. Maybe a bit too much. Maybe we try something like uh, 60. No, leave it on 100. Not so bad. Uh, it's up to you. You can play with the settings. It's just to get the basic idea what we do here. And now we unhide the form foreground. Here we go. Now we can play with the light settings here on, on the form foreground because this is so blurred out. It doesn't look very good. So we go to our particles and try to, um, to fix that. First, try uh, the transfer mode from add to screen. So we get a little bit rid of this overblown here. And don't forget to scrub through the timeline. Of course, right now, we have here a lot of particles over each other, which brings this effect. And if you go more in time, more in space, it's getting better sometimes, sometimes not. But it looks not so bad. OK, to get uh, rid of these overblurred areas, we can change the size of the particles to something like 0.3 and try that. Here we go. And this is very, very OK and very cool and very fine for me. So next is we do some color corrections and a little glow on all that. Um, we need a layer, new adjustment layer, and we call that glow slash effects. And we want to have another new adjustment layer, and we call that color correction. And on the color correction, color correction um, adjustment layer, we apply first a level and second a curve. So first hide the curve, go to levels, and bring the black point a touch up and the white also. And let's see, so that looks very cool. Got a much uh, more contrast here going on. And we will do some things again with the BG, with the background. And we go to curves and go to the red curve. And we bring that up a touch to get more of this area here lighten. And we go to the green one and try that just also a touch to get more, to have more light here. But anyway, it's up to you how you do that. We go to the glow and put, of course, a glow on it. Let's 
try this. Stylize glow. That looks weird. That looks ugly. But we bring the glow radius up to something like eight, nine hundred, and bring the intense down to point five. Yeah, that's what we got. Maybe we can make try point three. Yeah, cool. And uh, next is we go to our background layer and we go to our effects and preset and we want to have a four color gradient. That looks crazy. We solo that. We want to have some oranges here on the upper right corner. Something like so. So. And we want to have the same for the blue. And for the green, we want to have a black. And also for the purple, a black. So that's what we got. Then zoom out a little bit and bring these orangish uh, anchor points to left and right so that you get just a little orange shining going on here and play with the black settings. Bring it up to here and here so that you have just a smooth lighting going on there. And if we unhide that, we got some light here, some light here. Maybe, if you like to, you can do it the other way around. Bring this one light area here and the black one to there. So we got light from the background here. Color gradient, so tweak that a bit. So it's up to you where you want to have the lighting coming from. And that's it. We're nearly done. That's the idea behind those particles. If you render that, you will have a smooth, cool moving. It takes some time to render. Maybe you will shut off uh, for preview renderings the depth of field in the camera or uh, decrease the quality of the preview. We have uh, full resolution on default. We bring it down maybe to quarter. It also looks cool and it got much more faster to render. Just try that. So. Cool, smooth, organic movements. So now, what will you do with this? Maybe you bring in your logo. Try that. Bring in the tutorial palette. Bring it into here. That looks cool anyway. And you can animate your logo over this organic particle background or make it 3D and uh, hit P on the keyboard and position it back in Z space. Up a little bit, here a little bit. Now that was too much, so we want to have it sharp because we have depth of field on the camera. Try it like so. And we scale it down. to here, and we bring it between form foreground and form background. And as you see, that's a very cool effect because it flies in the middle of the particles, okay? Which is a very cool effect, so you can play around with that. If you go scrub forward, Here you see, it looks like the logo is in the middle of the particle, so you can very cool animations. You can let them come out from the in, in Z space. Um, here we go, positioning. Let's fly them up to here and sharpen that again, for example, and play with the camera. Leave it on zero. No, sorry. Here we go. Or what you can try to do is a very cool also effect. You try a new layer, adjustment layer. We call that volume. And we bring in 
uh, CC radial fast blur. Put that to brightest. Bring that up. Maybe like so. And this looks also very, very cool. Like a wormhole or whatever. Looks cool. Gives them more depth. And in this case, we bring the logo before the particles. So it shines also. Uh, you can tweak that a little bit. Give them a curves. And bring the black point down. And change that from normal to screen. Here we go. So you can handle the glowing, which's going on there. A touch is more light, is more glowing is more black as less glow as less glowing okay here we go maybe before you do that we hide that put in a tint like so so we don't have the shininess gone on there and the tint not so much just a touch of orangish to get more glowing on there so and a bit more radial fast blur like so here we go cool light shining from the center of your screen you can Change that, of course, the center of the radial. As you see here, it's gone on. But it's also a cool effect. Hope you got the idea what you can do with that. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you follow us and like us on, on Facebook, on Facebook too, on, on YouTube. Follow us, subscribe on YouTube, like us on YouTube. That will be very, very fine. Thanks for watching. See you next time. My name is Oliver for Tutorial Palette. Bye.